Good morning. So today what we're going to be talking about is how to make a cartouche. Now a cartouche is an ancient Egyptian symbol that was used by royalty. And here's mine. All right. The cartouche is actually this outside form here. And, it, and the inside is the hieroglyphics that would spell the name. Now this was only used by Egyptian royalty. It's kind of like a signature. And you would find these on anything that belonged to that pharaoh or queen. Um, like we know what King Tut's cartouche looked like. We know what Nefertiti's cartouche looked like. And that's basically what it was used for. But you're going to be making one because it's going to be Egyptian royalty for this project. Now, a little bit about hieroglyphics. For one thing, there were 800 different symbols in Egyptian hieroglyphics. So, be thankful that you guys only have to learn, what, 26 letters in the alphabet. Now, what makes it a little different, hieroglyphics, it's a little bit like Japanese writing. That, uh, and we studied that early on in the year. In that, we have consonants, separate consonants that represent sound. And when we want to make additional sounds, we have to combine two consonants. So like if we want to make the sh sound in beginning of my name, Cheryl, I have to have an S and an H. Or for some people, they use the C and the H. It makes the same sound. But in hieroglyphics, that is a sound, and it is just represented by one character. Um, another thing that you need to know in hieroglyphics is there are no vowels in hieroglyphics they didn't feel that they need them now vowels if you just need them can't remember a e i o u those are the vowels there are not vowels there's other languages that do that as well arabic is a language that does not use vowels in fact even in arabic they do not have a form of the word to be it's kind of confusing when you start to learn Arabic because we say that a lot. I am, he is, blah, blah, blah. Um, another thing about hieroglyphics is not all languages have the same sounds. And for some reason, the L sound and the V sound were not represented in their language initially. So, just like in Japanese when we learn kanji, you have to find a something that is very close to represent the l sound and the v sound. Now later on, after the Egyptians started trading with people and they realized they needed this sound, they included the lion symbol to represent the l sound. Still none for the v. So um, if you have a v in your name, and I really can't think of anyone right now, any of you that do, but you're going to have to find another letter. Um, when we did kanji, we used the B sound. Now, and just to demonstrate that a little further, let's take the names George and Judith. J, George, J, Judith. It's the same sound, so you're only going to use one symbol to represent that, even though in our language we use two different letters. So, I'm going to go over the hieroglyphic. I made this little table, and you can see this is very simply drawn, all right? Um, so, I'm going to go over these sounds. So, this would be your ah sound. Now, that's an A and an H, an ah sound, like a, a short A in our language. And you use this little um, vulture-looking guy. The B uh sound is this boot. The K sound. I skipped C because C can be represented, the sound of C, K like K, or S like S. So you only need the K sound because K doesn't change its, um, its sound in our language unless it's silent and it begins, it's at the beginning of the word like not. So this is a basket. The S sound is like this it looks like a cane, but in actual hieroglyphics, they, it was a rag that they would throw over things. D sound is this open hand. Your F sound is the, the snake. 
Now, G's here, but this is the G sound, like it would be in garbage. It's represented by this jar, and I know I have some Gavins, and I have some Gabes, so you would use this one. The H sound is the symbol right here. Now, here's your J sound, like I have a JC, and I have a... I know I have a, jo a Joanna. So you would, this, it's the snake as well, but it's going in a different direction. Here's your L sound. Your M sound is this owl. Your N sound is like this representation of water. Your P sound, the square. Your R sound, this one's in my name, is like an I. Your T sound is the basket turned over. Here is a combination sound, the SH sounds a rectangle um here is your long a a which is this long outstretched hand here if you have an oo or a w sound like the w you this is little quail looking bird if you have a y sound like in y or um long e you're going to use this or um now here i've put and I hope I haven't forgotten any sounds. If I have and you have them in your name, contact me and I'll, I'll do some more research. Um, here I have a symbol of a man, a seated man, and here is a seated woman. Now these are called determinants. And you have these, um, I know you have these in Chinese writing. What a determinant is, is you use it at the end of your name or name of an object and it tells you what it is. So if you are a boy, you're going to use this seated male figure. If you are a woman, you're going to use the seated woman figure. And what that tells the reader is that this is a guy's name or this is a gal's name. And like I said, you have those in Chinese writing as well. So now I'm going to go over basically how you put together your um, hieroglyphic. So first thing you would do is you're going to write your name. All right, just write your name out with all the consonants that you use in your vowels. And after you do that, you're going to start to eliminating things. So I've used Charlotte as an example because it's just it's a better example than my name. So the first thing you would do. Any letter in your name that you do not hear, you actually do not hear it, mark it out like the, this E. This E is not pronounced in Charlotte. You don't use it. It's there for looks. Um, anywhere you have two letters together that make the same sound, like her two T's here, underline that. Anywhere where you have two letters together that make one sound, like the beginning of her name, Sh Charlotte. That those two letters make the same sound. Now up here in mine, what I've crossed out is the e and the y because they don't use vowels, and I'm not going to use those when I when I do my cartouche. Now I do have the uh, combined consonant sound of the sh. So after you do that, what you're going to do is go back to your heart your hieroglyphics and. So my sh sound is right here, this rectangle. My r sound is right here, the, the i. And my l sound, well, I'm lucky I get the lion. So I have sh and that would be my name in hieroglyphics. And then I would put my determinant, the woman symbol, at the end of my name. And as you can see, here is my cartouche. And then I'm going to be Egyptian royalty today, so I'm going to put it in this. Now, if you have a really long name, you can organize this, these symbols any way that you want. Some, um, you can put them side by side. You can put them across. You can put them up and down like I did. It doesn't matter. Uh, whatever is pleasing to the eye, because the scribes in ancient Egypt not only were proficient writers, they were also proficient artists because write, uh, writing and art in these cultures 
were a combination of talents. They liked artists because, of course, they wanted things to be beautiful. And all Egyptian art is very beautiful. The reason that we are doing this is we're going to be doing this project that you can see here behind me. All right, you're going to do a portrait of yourself as a pharaoh. But two things that you're going to need on there are going to be a cartouche with your name and hieroglyphics on it and the Eye of Horrors. And we will talk about the Eye of Horrors later. So have a great day.